that's not a sound I like, to be real honest. So why do I keep it? Why is it now my main gigging amp? This is the ZT Lunchbox amp. Now, it's... They say it's 200 watts, and a lot of people try it out and go, it ain't 200 watts. But there's some secrets to it, so we'll get into that. Let's look at the controls. The ambience is supposed to make it sound like an open back cab tone, just a basic tone, your volume and your gain. On the back, you have the second speaker out, which is an eight ohm minimum. You have a headphone out, it's a full size jack. You have your speaker on and off. If you got a speaker out there, you can turn off the internal speaker. I would leave them both running. Of course, power on and off, standard jack, and you can, if you're touring overseas, you can vary the voltage. I'm recording this on the Sennheiser 906 mic going into an Apogee interface into Logic Pro. Pretty straightforward, nothing in between me and the amp. That's a reasonable practice volume, but I gotta say, that wouldn't keep up with a drummer. It certainly doesn't feel like 200 watts worth of amp, I gotta say. So, just for fun, this is the gain dimed out. I'm bring the tone way up because that's a little flabby sounding to me. So, I gotta say, the sounds aren't great like this. It's not loud enough, the tone's okay, the distortion's definitely not it. This is the older model before reverb. It doesn't have reverb, it's got ambience, and that sounds like absolute ass. So no, I don't use it. I'm not gonna show you that, that's terrible. So why do I keep it? Why is it now my main gigging amp? Well, there's a couple of secrets. Let me, let me show you a little trick here. Little plug, 90 degree, Stereo to stereo, basic headphone adapter. It's kicked up about 10 decibels. There's no explanation why, but plugging into the auxiliary input, which is where you put an MP3 player if you wanted to to jam along with it. Now there's another thing with this amp. It is not 200 watts. It is 100 plus 100. There's a jack on the back for plugging in an extra speaker cabinet. Now unfortunately I don't have one here, but that's where the other 100 watts goes is into that speaker. It only puts 100 watts to this admittedly tiny little speaker, but it actually, it's not bad if you do it right. So the next part to why this is my gigging amp. Just a second. So this is my gigging pedal board. Okay, so this is just with an EQ pedal. That's a way better sound. That's a usable sound. I might, that might be a little bright. Let's take the tone down just a hair. Now I've just cranked up the output volume on the EQ just a hair. That's a usable volume, and I can go further, but I'll get to that in a sec. Now there is another trick that I do, because you can hear it's got a lot of hiss. So I'm taking the thing out of there. I'm adding on one of these. I'm plugging that all into here. Now I've bypassed the gain control completely. And 
that it's got the loudness, it's got the cleanness. That's a way better tone, but let's go one more secret in. So this is how I've got the equalizer set. Now I'm gonna pull that back just to here. So I've raised those and I brought that down and just a little bit of the low bass. I'm gonna turn this guy on. So it's set to a pretty low gain. Now it's a Wampler Tumnus Deluxe, and I use it because it's got three tone controls on it, and it becomes a really nice little preamp. So let's see how that sounds. Because I've got delay, I usually have that on there. And I also have an afterneath, which is a reverb pedal. Marshall Blues Breaker 2. So this is now my gigging amp because it's super portable and I can carry it in and it does keep up with drummers and bass players and other guitarists. It will do it. I played an outdoor festival and the sound man could not believe how loud that little thing got. That's why I'm keeping it and why I'm not so disappointed in it like I was. By using all of those little tricks, using the EQ pedal, using the Wampler Tumnus leading in, a little bit of delay on there, by having it as a clean preamp going into the auxiliary in, bypassing the gain control, it becomes a great little pedal platform. That's what I use it for. It's loud enough to play my gigs with and it's, it's actually sounds pretty good once you do those things to it. So if you've got some kind of tone controlling preamp overdrive pedal that you can dial in a pretty clean sound or even if you want a little bit crunchy it works really well. Would it be worth it to buy this amp which I bought used for $200 Canadian and a Tumnus and an EQ pedal to get where I've gotten with this? Probably not. You could probably buy a Blues Junior or something get what I need out of it. But I had them. I had the Tumnus. I had the EQ pedal. This for 200 bucks on top. Now you could use any drive pedal that has more than one tone control on it. Or you could drive it with, you know, if you have one of those multi-effects pedals, you could set up the sound in there and drive it with that. It's way lighter than my Fender Vibralux Reverb. It's the reissue one and it sounds amazing. It's a wonderful amp, but damn, it's heavy and my old back just doesn't like that. This little guy, it's pretty heavy actually. It's like 15 pounds. Like it's a solid little piece, but it's way easier to carry. I go into gigs, I've got a small PA system, I've got my pedal board, I've got that little lamp and some stands, and I'm ready to do a gig with just that. It goes on one trolley. Way easier than using the big amp. And once I've dialed it in, I like the sound. It's got the sound that I want. Now the guitar that I was using, this old Raven, uh, mid-70s student guitar, I put Epiphone pickups in there. Normally I play a Godin Montreal or my Paul Reed Smith. Those both sound really good into it. Those are my standard gigging guitars, but I thought I'd pull this out. It's, it was on hand and you know, it's a fun little guitar to to mess around with and it sounds not too bad with the better pickups in it. I rebuilt it. There's another video on that on my channel. If you're interested in that, go check it out.